Here is number one. Number two. Number three, Christina. We just have two more in this group and then we'll start a new set. In the meantime, just try and guess the intervals that you're hearing. Here's number three. And number four. Here are the answers. Major seven, major sixth, number three, major third, four was a major second. Okay, we have one more try. You're only choosing from these first four intervals. Major second, major third, major sixth, or major seventh. Here's our last go. This is number one. Number two. Number three. And last one, number four. Here are the answers. Major second, major third, major seventh, major sixth. Okay. Now, listen, this is, this is going to only be tricky between the perfect fourth and perfect fifth, I think, but we're going to do your next row down. We are just hearing perfect intervals. So the P1, you're going to think I'm so, I mean, it's the same note three times. You'll think I'm crazy, but it's important because it will come up. P4. Remember that's here comes the bride. P5. Star Wars. And P8. Okay, those are your perfect intervals. So one through four again, we'll do them three times here. We're going to move a little bit quicker. This is number one. Number two. Number three. Okay, and number four. P4, then P8, then P1, and number four was P5. All right, here's your second shot. Label your papers one through four. Here is number one. Number two. Number three. 
Number three. Number four. Sorry. Okay, here are your answers. P8, P4, P1, P5. Okay, listen, you guys, for the very last one, we are going to do every single interval except these two. We're going to add these on next time, I promise, but we're just going to do those eight because I don't want to take any more time because I have breakout room stuff planned for you guys and I'm pretty stoked. So here we go, combining just the top two rows, label your paper one through eight. Here we go, number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Last one, number eight. Okay, does anybody want to hear one of those again? If so, just hold up your finger number for the one you'd like to hear again. No takers? Okay, here are the answers. M2 for number one, M3, for number two, M7, number three, M6, number four, number five was P1, then P8, then P4, and then P5. So I still clumped them with all the majors and then all the perfect intervals. Did I trick anybody? I got perfect fifth and major sixth. Flipped up. Yep, that's an easy one. The song for major six, I didn't even review and it's... Like that old folk song? Does that sound familiar to you? Oh, there was a Christmas song that I... Oh, man. I recently thought of a... Was playing a Christmas song that I realized, oh my gosh, this should be my new major six song. Hopefully I'll think of it while you guys are in breakout rooms. A good way to remember intervals is as you're playing your own music, identify them and see if you can relate your own songs to what it is that you are having to memorize interval-wise. Okay, uh, moving on. Do you guys have any more questions about that? Hey, I'm finally remembering to record this and I will give it to you so that at least this first part you can look back on and review this ear training if that would be helpful for you. Okay, so you guys are going to spell some triads in breakout rooms and really you're tr spelling triads plus a couple of seventh chords. I'm going to put you into two breakout rooms so you'll work with a partner. You get to pick whatever key you want as long as it has at least two sharps or flats. It has to have two sharps or flats and if you want to go big and do a crazy black key that would be awesome. But what your job is is you need to spell triads. Major, then the minor, then the augmented, the diminished, then you need to spell the major seventh chord and the dominant seventh chord. 
we did this last time with that crazy hard key of B, right? So if this seems like not a big deal for you, actually, I'll just, I'm going to have the breakout rooms be totally random because you get two shots to do this. So I'm going to pop into your breakout rooms and ask if you need help and figure out what key you're working on and kind of just be a fly on the wall. But your job is to just pick a key and then show me every one of these. If I was, you know, cheating and using the key of G, that is what my first answer would look like. Okay, so those that's what your answer will look like. Just three names of the notes. We'll all come back together and your job will be to spell those triads from bottom to top for the entire group. Okay, so basically you're going to share your answers. Uh, when you are done, drop something in the chat because I think I will see it. If not, I'll just pop in and ask if you're done. Okay, are you ready? Something will pop up. Oh, I'll also drop into the chat all of the types of triads you have to spell so that you don't have to memorize that because that would be confusing too. Um, so let me go ahead and do the breakout room. Something will pop up on your screen and you'll just click it and it should poof, put you into that breakout room. Okay. Did it work? Yeah, it's working. So cool. Okay, guys, welcome back. We're going to wait a little bit longer for Amy and Christina. Poor Christina got, I don't know what happened, but she got disconnected. So they got a little bit of a late start. But ironically, you guys both started with the key of A major. So I'm going to let them give the answer to A, see if it's the same as yours. If not, we'll duke it out, figure out what's up. And then you guys will give your answers for whatever flat key you chose. Have you guys played around with the new settings on Zoom? Let me show you something. So the new Zoom has changed entirely. Um, if you have not updated, you should, so that you can do things like this. <laughs> it's amazing, right? You can do all sorts of crazy things. You can feel like you're talking to a whole theater. It's kind of cool. But way more importantly is the new sound settings are absolutely incredible. There's a YouTube video that explains it very quickly. If you are interested in me sending that to you, just send me a quick email and I'll make sure you're all dialed in with, but can't you tell from this experience alone how much better it's already gotten? Do you guys feel that way? Like the sound is better today? Okay, we are going to start with uh, Amy and Christina, I want you guys to share your answers for the key of A. Either one of you is fine. Okay. Um, so for the major, should I just like, so we got um, A, C sharp, and E. Then for the minor, A, C, E, augmented, A, C sharp, E sharp. Um, you want to say the rest? Mm -hmm. Um, for diminished, I did A C E flat, major seventh A C sharp E G sharp, dominant seventh A C sharp D and G. A C sharp E and G. I think that's what. You oh mean. yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So just so you have a sound association, A major, A minor. A augmented, aliens landed, A diminished, A major seven, oof, like you're sipping lemonade on the beach, and a dominant seven, like you really need to go somewhere. It wants to resolve always, so. Okay. Now for Finn and Christian, tell us your answer. What flat key did you choose? Oh, Finn has a question. If you flat the third in a minor key, then it's a cliffhanger. Uh, I was going to make a joke, but I accidentally hit the enter key. Will you just tell us? 
Well, if you plot the third in in a minor triad, then A minor would be spelled A C sharp flat E. <laughs> C sharp flat. It's a new sign just right next to each other. You need to create a symbol for it. <laughs> okay. Uh oh yeah. What what flat key did you choose, you guys? You should uh, E E flat. Flat. Okay, give us the answers, either one of you. Um, I guess I'll do the first three. Perfect. So for major, um, B flat, G, B flat, a minor, B flat, G flat, B flat. And then um, augmented E flat G B. Aliens landed. Yes. Okay, you nailed it. Finn, what's up next? Okay, uh, E flat diminished. That'd be E flat G flat B double flat. Now listen, if you put A, you would get it wrong. So that was good, double flat. And it just is literally two little flats side by side. Double sharps look like an X. Okay, next, very good. Uh, e flat major seven. Uh, e flat G, B flat D. Good. And give us the dominant. And e flat, se e flat seventh. Uh, e flat G, B flat D flat. That's good. Okay, you guys, you both groups got 100%. I feel like you guys are confident with this. We are going to build like crazy next semester. Over the break, I'm going to send you guys a little exam that will really help me know next semester exactly what level you guys should be testing on because right now there's a couple different levels within this class potentially and we had to combine them all with that said myself dr olson how when we are all new at teaching aim and so every yc student is going to take some type of placement test so you can expect that it is very likely you guys will all still be in the same class um okay with that said next week is the yc christmas master class explain this really briefly i know I, i'm over time but all of the YC Christmas pieces that are going to be premiered on December 22nd are going to be performed for you by grad students and then by piano faculty. So you're going to hear a student perform, then a grad student is going to teach a couple important things about the piece and then they're going to perform it for you. They have six minutes total, so you'll hear all nine pieces. The class is from 6 to 7 p.m., so it's longer. If you can't come for the first half hour, I'll be bummed, but it's okay. Just come for the time that you can. It should be just one of the most interesting recital like experiences that you've ever had but also with a huge educational component yes this is next week on monday evening but so you'll also get to hear a student perform learn from a grad student hear a grad student perform these pieces so and also dr olson and dr cahill smith will be with us too and they'll be demonstrating as well so and i said maybe i'll be doing sleigh ride unless i can get a grad student to step up to the plate and do it because it'd be we have just enough grad students to get all of them to do one plus Kevin and Cahill. But if we can't get a grad student to do it, then I might do that sleigh ride piece. But anyway, any questions? Do we just go in and yes, I'll send a link. You'll hop in and it really is just about sitting back, taking notes and enjoying the experience. All right, any other questions? Okay, well, this was a pleasure, you guys. I'll send the recording this time. And I'll see you next week at 6 p.m. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you guys next week.